Barry. She is a staff editor and columnist for the New York Times. <laughs> Please welcome Barry Weiss. Barry, how you doing? Hi. Great pleasure to meet you. Okay, I'm so glad you're here. I've been wanting to have on more people uh, to talk about this issue in a very open-minded way, and you seem very open-minded. Well, I am thank very, you. <laughs> I am very concerned about a widening gap between how we, all of us speak about the Me Too movement privately, or anything really yes. in America these days, in, a, in our own homes, among our friends, and then how we do it in public. And of course, with social media, everybody has a sort of public persona. Yes. And we're becoming ourselves and our avatar. Yeah. And I like people who keep it real, and I feel Thank like you. you really have. So, Thank you. first of all, address the interesting part of it, which is that the fight is really between factions of women. It's not between men and women arguing. Right. So, obviously, the Me Too movement is long overdue, as we've seen today with uh, Rob Porter and everyone else. But there's a real debate happening between the hard left and liberals. The hard left is basically saying, it's okay if a few innocent men go down with the ship, if that's what it means, if that's what it takes to bring down the patriarchy. They hate zero tolerance on the right when it comes to drug policy, but they love zero tolerance when right. it comes to sexual <laughs> misconduct. That's a problem because what it does is collapse all the categories. It means that Aziz Ansari is on a list next to Harvey Weinstein. And yes. I don't think anyone with common and sense thinks that that's reasonable. Right, but... Meantime, I'm a, I... meantime the I'm, liberals, yeah. and I think we... The liberals, and we count, I think you and I count ourselves among them, right. we want to see a change in society. We believe this is overdue. We Correct. share those same goals. But I think, personally, that the way to get there and the way to make this a mainstream, sustainable movement is to stick to things, I don't know, like due process, like innocent right. until proven guilty. Yes. No. I, mean, well, I don't think... I don't now think a talking... politics. I don't think a politics that basically says this category of person, men, is toxic and tainted, is a good kind of politics. We see uh, where that ends up. And what about men just shut up? Because oh, that, Matt Damon. Well, everybody, not right. just him, but any any <laughs> nobody. No men spoke at the Golden Globe. Right. You know, men, men, and when a man does say the wrong thing, and Matt Damon, by the way, did not say the wrong thing. No, he said the he most said, anodyne thing in the exactly. world. Exactly, and then he said, after he said what he said, which he is raped, is apologized and said, I should just shut up. Yeah. This is what I'm asking. This is not going to help, because, you know, he after he said what he said, he added, uh, but both those things, he was talking about rape and a pat on the butt, one yes. is worse than the other, but he said both should be eradicated, never condoned, Yes. And, you know, when you're wrong, even when you say the right thing... What's well, a problem? So this is and why... I, then I feel like a husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, if you want to understand why people are silencing themselves, why are people silencing themselves on this issue? They see what because happens... when they say the right thing, it's wrong. Exactly. And it, that's, that's a terrifying prospect. Right. And that is what's happening. I mean... There's sort of trial by Twitter, not only for the people that are accused, right? Not only for the people who, once they're accused, by the way, how do you, what office do you go to to regain your reputation? Right. But it's also if you step out of line even slightly with the hard left feminist orthodoxy, all of a sudden, like me, you're a traitor to your gender, well, you're an anti feminist, you're condoning rape culture. But also your generation. There is also a war within the generations, and I think within your generation, and you have to win it. I'm trying. You must. <laughs> Thank you. I am telling you, because, you know... My generation thinks the, that the asking someone for a drink, 25% of millennial-aged men right. think that asking someone for a drink constitutes sexual harassment. Well, if that's sexual harassment, I, doing this is sexual assault, hey. and an unsolicited kiss is rape, we've lost. It's over. Right. That's game over. Then words but don't mean anything. What's important is that and it's that's 25%. <laughs> And this is what I always try to keep in mind when I'm feuding with the millennials. I don't think it's the majority of them. I, th I think it's the upper middle class kids who grew up screaming at their parents. And that Partially. Was, and that was okay. And, it's, and, it's... and they are just so fucking fragile. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, as someone... And, and they, they're like... I, I, I think of them as emotional hemophiliacs. And, <laughs> and the rest that's, of us have, have to be so careful around the baby. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, take my penis out, cut it off. <laughs> you know, well, it, this is what's happening.
happening? I had someone touch me on the elbow the other day, <gasps> and they like froze and apologized. I had someone else email me and say, I'm so sorry. I said, what are you sorry for? We were on a podcast together. He was apologizing because he told me that I sounded like cute, he used, he used the word cute, it was like you sounded really cute and smart. And he, it was, I was like, you're losing your yeah, head. People are losing we, their minds. They are losing their minds and they're gonna bleed what is so great out of life. I mean, we're, Valent this is the first Me Too Valentine's Day coming up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you need to give who, a, get a permission who, slip, who, not a Valentine's. <laughs> you know, I mean, who knows what to write in the card? It's <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> but, you know, you can make anything 100% safe. A police state, they always say, is the safest place to live. Right. But you're in a police state. Correct. Okay, we don't want to do that with love. We, we've spent our whole history as humans saying it's magical, it's serendipity. A lot of it happens subconsciously. We don't know why we're attracted to somebody <laughs> right. or why it works or why somebody turns us on. You can't legislate all this or, or rule it out of existence. Right. I do think, however, that there's an opening in this moment. One, one thing I think is true is that I was put through that system that you talked about, the snowflake factory. Right. You know, I went to a college <laughs> where I was told that Gender is a social construct. Nature doesn't matter at all. That there's really no wow. difference between men and women. I'm sorry. That's just, those are myths, okay? And that's a lie that the sexual revolution sold to women. And I think one exciting thing about this moment is that there's an opening for it to revisit the sexual revolution. And the fact that all of our sexual conversation, you know, the conversation about our sexual culture is about consent and pain. What, whatever happened to intimacy and love and romance. Wouldn't it be amazing well, if that was our conversation? Courtship. 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 See, is there any... That's, that's become a dirty word, but it No, it court me. No. I want to be courted. Well, but... but uh, okay, exactly. But, yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't mean sex. But no, but courted means maybe pursued, which means maybe, ooh, maybe somebody got the wrong idea. And, no, pursued and, and you with demurred boundaries. once. Pursued and now, with boundaries and then you slowly let them in. But, it's, but to me, there's a tremendous contradiction between that and then Tinder. Like, Why? Like, like, <laughs> Well, like, you know, if you if you uh, ask me for a drink, it is sexual harassment. And if I do that to you at work, that is sexual harassment. But, like uh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I'm going to do this, and in and 20 minutes... And then we're going to rut like animals in right. 20 minutes. Yeah. And that, 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 that. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that seems nuts, right? I mean... The, the, right. Your generation's a little fucking crazy. Okay. <laughs>